Now this chapter of Taizai. Out of all things, I did not expect to find out about power levels. I did not expect this chapter to be about power levels at all. Especially the title name, Valor's Eye. I think that's what it's called. But to find out Meliodas' power level, and it's probably not even his peak, is kind of fucking scary. It really is, which I want to dive into this. For the power levels to be introduced, now we have a basis and, like, look at the levels of each individual character. Now we kind of understand where Meliodas' power standpoint is technically at when it comes to this series. And this is kind of like the, the base groundwork we can get at when we start comparing other characters to how strong Meliodas is. In this chapter, there is a lot of setup. A lot of setup. Not just with this power level standpoint. We find out that these different kingdoms, not just specifically Leonis, you know, our main kingdom we've ventured around, we've had an adventure in with the manga since it first began. We find out that there is other kingdoms with Holy Knots, which we already knew kind of, but I mean, we find out that there is different standards for other Holy Knots and other kingdoms. Now, these different standards that uh, Merlin didn't really go completely into the different standards, for instance, like what other kingdoms like standards are for what how high your power level should be, but this makes me question a lot. For one thing, since now we know technically there's different standards for different kingdoms, everybody can possibly have holy nuts, the question is there probably is kingdoms out there that maybe have a power standpoint, you have to have a power level of like 3,000 to be a holy knot. Which would be crazy. It'd be fucking crazy. Because we get the actual groundwork of how you become a holy knot in the series now. You have to have a power level of 300. At first glance, that looks like a fuck ton. But when you get to the end of this chapter and you see Meliodas's, you're like, what the fuck? When, when you see that power level. 3,370, dude. What the fuck? Oh my god, dude. Like, oh. Okay, I knew Meliodas was strong. We all know this. He's never showed his full potential. He has it. I mean, he doesn't have his sacred treasure. He doesn't have his, like, freaking godly weapon. He can't use it. He, do he doesn't even have it. Imagine when Meliodas has this weapon, how fucking strong his power will be. It's like the entire dialogue with what, you know, King said. You may have all this power, but you might not be able to use it if you can't tap into it with your sacred treasure. Are you saying that that, that power that he we, currently shows is his maximum? Or is that not his maximum? And is that just like the power he has without his sacred treasure and without him transforming into his demon mode? Because I highly doubt, I, I fucking highly doubt that whatever that power level, you know, 3,370 for Meliodas is the maximum he has. Because we do know Meliodas has never showed his full potential, and I highly doubt that is his full potential. I mean, he's not even in his demonic form yet. So, I I'm questioning, like, how powerful is he even in his demonic form? Because even when we saw Meliodas in his demonic form, we never even saw him at full potential then. He was still, like you know, transforming into his demonic form. He was in, in the chapters we saw. His body was slowly turning into a demon, but slowly, it wasn't fully. And so he wasn't even at maximum power when we did see him then. So how fucking strong is he? You know, I'm gonna make the joke. I bet his power level is over 9,000. I'm willing to fucking bet it. His power level is over 9 fucking thousand. No joke. No joke. I, I'm willing to bet that. I'm willing to bet money on that. <sighs> now we have our, I guess, our main standard now when it comes to powers. We do. So I'm curious exactly what the power levels of all the other sins are. Like, what is Merlin's power level? What is, you know, Diane's power level? What is King's power? What's Bond's? I'm just really curious to find out what's everybody's standpoint in terms of power. I mean, Meliodas had like a, I think his spirit, his spirit alone was 2010. 2010, that was Meliodas' spirit level. That's not calculating into strength and power and stuff. Dude, that is ridiculous. That is freaking ridiculous. It makes me also question a couple other things, too. How strong was Hendrickson? Or even the Great Holy Knot? 
how strong was Dreyfus? How strong were these characters? Because the standards of a Holy Knight is 300. This Holy Knight, we saw that this assistant dude, I think, what was the name of this dude? I haven't written my notes. Six stars of the Azra Sky. That, that's the name of these, these fucking three little assholes that decided to walk up, think they can take on Meliodas in this chapter. Pretty much... How strong was Hendrix? See, if the basis of the, being a holy knight is 300, these guys had like a power level, or one of these dudes that wasn't even a diamond ranking, they were platinum and diamond, and there was one diamond ranking. I'm guessing that maybe Hendrickson and even Dreyfus might have been in 2,000 to 3,000 level. They could have been around, you know, maybe Meliodas' power. But even then, we don't know. We don't know how strong they were. Even if you calculate the demon power on top of that, that, you know, freaking Hendrickson had on top of that. So, how strong was Hendrickson? At the end of the day, how strong was he compared to everybody else along with Dreyfus? I'm, or even the Great Holy Knight. I'm fucking scared to find out how great the Holy Knight was. The Great Holy Knight. Oh my god. It's just like, what Meliodas says in this is that the, these people, the, these three fi fucking fodder dudes, like, I got their names because I didn't even care to remember their names. Their name is, like, Doggett? Doggett? What the fuck? Doggett, Wayo, and Death Pierce. Now, Death Pierce sounds like a badass. I, I can't put his name down. Death Pierce, the diamond rank dude, is a badass. But the other two, Wayo and freaking Doggett or Doogett? The fuck? I'm just gonna call him Nugget. Let, let's just call that dude fucking Nugget, okay? He looks like a Nugget. He's Beefcake. Beefcake Nugget. They, they, yeah, that, that's it. That is his fucking name. That is his name. The big dude that got wrecked by Meliodas this chapter. Beefcake Nugget. That, that, that right there. That name. That's official. Make it official. Okay, so besides that, seeing how these guys, they were 800, okay? And in terms of becoming a Holy Knight, that's actually a pretty high standard. I mean, like I said, the standards of becoming a Holy Knight's 300, and if they were 800, and that dude was a platinum, and then you have the diamond ranking dude, I wonder how strong he is, and then you add this on top of Meliodas, I'm just curious. I wonder what Gil Thunder's power is. I'm really curious what Gil Thunder is, actually. I am really interested to see what Gil Thunder's level is. I, I really want to see that. I really, really want to fucking see that. Okay, now the chapter, for the most part, is very basic. It is a very basic chapter. It just lays down the foundation and groundwork for the powers, or the power levels. And for the mangaka to introduce something like this, that means that we're going to probably have some ridiculous things going down very soon. And I'll probably add in more, you know, fret, overall, like, fret to the series. Like, when you see someone with, like, a 9,000 power level, you'll be like, holy shit, when you compare it to Meliodas' standard. So... Yeah, I think this being introduced is going to add more fret to the series and allow us to actually get a grasp at how strong villains are. And which is a very good idea that the mangaka is deciding to introduce because it allows us to understand the power levels now of the villains in the near future. And Hawk actually has some usefulness now. I mean, he, he's useful but unuseful. I mean, he, I don't know. Hawk, I'm, I'm still trying to get a grasp of why... Why did he come back? Like, I mean, there's been a lot of theories. I've seen people bring up the Phoenix Fury and stuff like that. I've also saw theories from Chibits, which I don't know if it's true or not. But I saw some theories say that maybe Hawk is Escanor trapped inside of a pig's body by Merlin. But I, I don't know how logical that theory is. But, I mean, still the point of it is, is that... With the power levels being introduced, it allows us to understand the threat of the villains now, and know how strong they are, and it will add more tension to the series, which is a very good move by the mangaka, so I can fully support the power levels being introduced, because that has actually been one thing this series has always lacked. I mean, we know how strong villains were. Handy was just insane. We, we know how insane he was, how hyped he was, and all that, and there's even rumors that he's still fucking alive after the last chapter. Well, I mean, it's hinted that he is still alive, or some form of him is still alive, so... We still don't know if he's completely dead. And he was hyped up. He's really hyped up. And we knew he was strong. But I mean, now with this introduction of the power levels, we can finally get a grasp of how strong these villains are or if they're fodder level. Also, Apprentice Holy Knots is 150. That's incredibly low. Incredibly low. I, I know. I wonder what, you know, Gyrda's power level was when she got the demon blood inside of her. Or Jericho's. I wonder what their, you know, levels were when they got the demon blood inside of them. How far did it jump their rankings up? Another question. Overall, 
the chapter, one thing it does set up to is that, like I said, the introductions of the different standards of other kingdoms with their different holy knots. This means that we might be traveling around in the kingdoms, different kingdoms, not just this one kingdom we have seen through the course of the series, but we might actually start traveling to these other kingdoms. Since the manga has revealed that they want to make 40 volumes for the seven deadly sins, it kind of makes sense now that you factor in all these different kingdoms and different holy knots and stuff like that. So, yeah, a lot can go down and happen in these different kingdoms. So, yeah, we're going to have a lot of adventure ahead of us judging by the way this was set up so tell me your thoughts in the comments below how did you feel about this week's episode how did you feel about merlin making this valor's eye for a royal family to tell the power level of holy knots interesting but tell me your thoughts in the comments below i love you all so much you have a wonderful day or not wherever you live please be safe she be out